I'm going to try and explain why the enactment of this legislation is such a good idea and why people's instinctive response is to not believe it could possibly be as good an idea as it actually is. Uh, I'll start with the bottom line and then use the rest of my time to back up what I'm about to say. Uh, the National Infrastructure Bank established by this legislation, and I'll refer to it simply as the bank or the NIB from now on, will first permit state and local governments to take out loans that are effectively interest-free. Second, to make infrastructure investment that in most instances will generate enough revenue to effectively pay for itself over the life of the loans. And third, while still permitting the bank to make enough profit to enable it to subsidize state and local infrastructure investment that produces a public benefit, such as the construction of schools, playgrounds, parks, uh, all being good examples, without promising to pay for itself as immediately or necessarily within the boundaries of the state or local government that undertakes the investment. The bank will be able to do all of this um, without, as several people have mentioned, uh, costing taxpayers uh, anything at the federal level. Uh, and I will submit or argue that it's not really gonna cost them anything at the state and local level either. And, and that's what I'm gonna try and explain. I'll unpack uh, and explain what I've just said as I go along. Uh, first, why would the bank's loan be effectively interest-free? Uh, this may be the most complicated thing for people to understand. Um, so I'm gonna try and take it slowly. Uh, and I'd be happy to answer questions that anybody later has online or uh, separately. Uh, because those loans will be, why? Uh, why will the bank loans be effectively interest-free? It's because the loans will be repaid with dollars that because of inflation are worth less than the dollars received by the state or local government when the loan was dispersed to them. Uh, and if you do the math, you will find that the real value of the interest paid on the loans will equal the rate of interest on the loan minus the rate of inflation. If the rate of interest is 2% and the rate of inflation is 2%, 2% minus 2% equals zero. And the reduced value of the dollars you use to pay your loan will exactly equal the interest portion of your payments. But how do we know that the interest rate on bank loans will equal the rate of inflation over the period of time it is being repaid? Well, the truth is we don't know that for certain, but the interest rate on bank loans will be set by law at the same level the federal government pays for the money it borrows. And we can do that because this is a federally owned bank and the statute would provide for it. And because the loans to the federal government are generally viewed as risk-free, the interest rate on federal debt tends to equal the expected long-term rate of inflation. In other words, buying federal investment, federal government securities, that is federal government debt, debt buying, buying federal debt is the safest way to stash money away so it doesn't lose its value because of inflation. You won't really make any money, but you won't lose any either. Now, stated differently, if the interest rate on your loan equals the rate of inflation, the real value of the dollars you use to repay the loan will exactly equal the real value of the dollars you borrowed at the time the loan was dispersed to you. You won't pay any extra for inflation. Now, we don't know the expected long-term rate of inflation, uh, uh, and we therefore don't know that it will equal uh, uh, the uh, bank's uh, lending rate of interest, uh, but it is the market's best guess. Uh, the long-term uh, rate of interest that the federal government pays on its debt is effectively the um, rate of interest uh, that uh, investors believe will compensate them for inflation without giving them any profit effectively on their loan to the government. It's the safest of all investments, therefore has the least risk, but also the least rate of return. So the loans extended to state and local governments will tend to be interest-free. Now that's the most difficult part, I've gone with that. But the second thing I said is the infrastructure bank made by infrastructure investment 
made by state and local governments with the money they borrow from the bank will tend to pay for itself in most cases. Why is that true? Well, there are two reasons. The first is because a fair share of the investments will generate revenue directly in the form of user fees, public transportation systems, toll roads and bridges, airports, port facilities, water and sewer lines fall into this category. They all generate revenue in the form of user fees, which will help pay back the loans. The second reason is because the infrastructure investment promotes economic growth and the economic growth tends to increase tax revenues. Research tends to show that this is especially true for so-called hard infrastructure, which includes all of the fee generating infrastructure identified above, plus, uh, uh, and it does so whether or not fees are actually charged for the use of that infrastructure. Uh, now I'd like to show you a figure. Uh, this is a graph showing uh, total revenue that tax that state and local governments have generated for themselves uh, from 2009 through 2020. Uh, the bottom line is the actual dollar amount of tax revenue that they've received. The orange line above it is the amount of revenue they have received taking inflation out of it. In other words, this upward sloping line is showing that state and local governments became more effective. Well, let me not say that. They collected more revenue as time went on. The principal reason for that is because economic growth occurred, even though this was a period of slow economic growth recovering from the recession of 2007 to 2009. Now, if the infrastructure investment enabled by the NIB were added to the infrastructure investment that state and local governments did in fact make during this period, the result would be to tip both of these lines up more steeply. State and local governments would collect more money and the gap between uh, uh, what they collected and the real value of it uh, uh, would put them in the position of actually having more money after inflation to pay back the debts that they incurred. There is every reason to believe that as a result of these two combined facts, effects, the fee generating capacity of infrastructure investment and also the economic growth effect of that investment, that infrastructure investment of this type will pay for itself. And it's worth noting that uh, the infrastructure investment uh, by state and local governments is the bulk of all infrastructure investment in the United States. About 75% of all infrastructure investment is undertaken by state and local governments. Uh, so the increase in infrastructure investment allowed by the bank is gonna have a major effect, not just on state and local uh, uh, economies, but on the economy of the United States as a whole. Uh, now, uh, the second thing I said is that, uh, 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 well, no, actually, I'm going to go down my outline. Okay. Uh, there is another question, though, that causes people to doubt whether an NIB can really do all of this. Uh, we keep on saying it's going to uh, allow um, the bank to lend out $5 trillion worth of money to state and local governments for infrastructure investment. Uh, and that's not gonna cost uh, uh, the federal government a penny. Uh, and I think that people have trouble getting their head around that idea. How is it possible for an institution owned by the federal government to give state and local governments $5 trillion without charging taxpayers a penny? Okay. Well, the reason for that is because of the magic of uh, commercial banks. Uh, economists are fond of saying that there's no such thing as a free lunch, but that's not really true. Uh, as I've just tried to point out, uh, intelligent investment creates more than enough money to pay for the investment. If a free lunch in that sense were not possible, there would be no such thing 
as a profit-making private business. They're all predicated on the basis that if you make intelligent investment, you're going to get back more than you put into the investment. And that's true for infrastructure investment by governments at whatever level, uh, as well as for businesses. Uh, so first, um, uh, we've got to shed the idea uh, that the government cannot spend money uh, uh, unless it charges taxpayers for it or borrows it from somebody. Uh, well, if it doesn't charge taxpayers for it, and if it doesn't borrow it from somebody, where does it get it? That's where the banking part of this very clever legislation comes in. Commercial banks have been given the power to create money out of nothing in exchange for the close supervision that they submit to and the meeting of uh, strict requirements, uh, ensuring that they will be able to meet their obligations. Commercial banks are given the authority to make loans simply by crediting the bank accounts of their borrowers. They don't have to get the money from anybody. They can see, just punch a button and borrower X checking account goes up by whatever amount of loan they've taken out. The money is created. And in fact, 95% of the money that is in the United States economy is created in this way by commercial banks. Only 5% is created by the Federal Reserve Bank, which is where most people think the money supply comes from. That's where currency comes from. But as we know, most of the money that we have as individuals is not in currency in our pockets, it's in our bank accounts. And 95% of the money in that form has been created by commercial banks. What the NIB bill allows is simply for the federal government to operate a commercial bank on the same principles that Morgan, uh, JP Morgan Bank operates, that uh, uh, other big banks operate, Bank of America and so forth. There's nothing unconventional about it. There's nothing unsafe about it. It's simply allowing the government to do what it is always and will continue to allow commercial banks to do in the United States economy. And that I think is, is, is a, a understanding that and accepting it uh, is, is difficult for people because they have been told so consistently and from their own experience believe, I can't spend any money, I can't lend anybody any money unless I get it from someplace else, okay? Not true for commercial banks, will not be true for the NIB, and that's the magic of the source of the funds that is gonna generate all this economic growth and the benefits that it'll produce for the economy. Okay, that's it, thank you.